so let's uh, look into the each uh, component of the pass wd file so for that what will we do we'll uh, type cat of pass wd file and then pipeline then grip and i'll take charan as a user so here uh, two users are there which consists of a ch charan so we'll take this example the second one so run and then uh, so now the first part of uh, this complete uh, sentence is username the first one is username it is uh, it is used uh, when user logs in uh, it should be between 1 and 32 characters in length so the second part here you can see x and here you can see this is our second part and the second uh, part is password um, an x character indicates that encrypted password is stored in some other file that's shadow file so let's just look into that file once uh, shadow file that is also in etc uh, directory only so please note that you need to use the pass wd command to compute uh, to compute the hash of a password uh, typed at the cli or to store or update the hash of the password in etc and uh, uh, cdc and shadow file cat uh, shadow sorry shadow file it's cat uh, shadow let's uh, see this is what this is what the encrypted uh, password for charan even i i forgot the pa what's this password i do not know so this is what the encrypted uh, password for this guy and for uh, surya charan this is something else okay so that's how it works so let's uh, clear it off and then uh, we'll get back to the previous one yes this is what we are looking for and uh, and we'll look into we'll move on to the third part of this that is uh, user id the third part user id that is 1002 is our user id for charan and uh, each it's it's also called as a uid each user must be assigned a user id that's uid a uid uh, zero is reserved for root and uh, uids 1 to 99 are reserved for other predefined accounts further uid from 100 to 999 are reserved by system for administrative and system accounts groups so let me uh, uh, demonstrate that again so cat and then pass wd okay there are a lot of pass wd okay so here if you look into this all the files there are different uh, users not one there are plenty of users and it begins with the zero user id so zero user id is for root user you can clearly see this is what zero user id zero user id is for the root user and one user id this is for daemon and then bin binary files will take two and system will take three and sync will take four and games and a lot of other will take four so these are zero to 99 whereas if you and docker and these uh, system administrative or uh, system related uh, software will take uh, see u u i d d t s s 106 they have taken other number and uh, and surya charan this is this is another user he is take he took 100 and charan has taken one uh, and test is another user he has taken 1 
double zero one and Charan has taken uh, one double zero two. So this is how uh, user IDs are assigned. Basically, zero one to nine are reserved for the free de predefined accounts, and uh, uh, hundred to ninety nine are specifically uh, for system administrative or accounts and groups related work and more than thousand is what uh, a normal user like uh, like we get it so let's clear it again and get back to the work okay so now for the fourth one is fourth one for us is group ID we call it as G I D the primary group ID stored in uh, uh, group file so let's look into that group file also so cat and then group okay okay this is what our group file is. group files you can see here whatever the groups that uh, this uh, uh, this uh, distribution consists of uh, all all group uh, and then their group IDs are given docker we have docker group ID that's one double zero one and uh, Charan one double zero three test one double zero two and admin one one seven these are different group IDs that we have and then the fifth one what we have is user ID info so here we have fifth user ID fifth one user id info or g course uh, the comment field it allows you to add extra information about the user such as user's full name phone number etc this field used by a finger command and uh, the next one what we have is after fifth one what we have is uh, this is some information this is a single field uh, this is some information about this user and after that what we have is home directory home directory the absolute the absolute path from here to here the absolute path uh, to the directory the user will be in when they log in that's what is uh, given there if this a directory does not exist that then user directory becomes a root one okay and the last one which is left is the seventh one that is command uh, command or shell so command or shell that's the directory of the command command or shell the last one the seventh part is the absolute uh, path of a command or shell that's uh, forward slash bin forward slash bash Typically, this is a shell. Please note that it does not have to be a shell. For example, system admin can use the no login shell, which acts as a replacement shell for the user's account. So, if shell set to as bin forward slash no login and the user uh, tries to log into the Linux system directly, the as bin no login shell closes the connection. So these are the different uh, components of the passwd file. So and this is very much uh, useful because uh, it consists of a users and groups and as well as passwords. So we have looked into all of the information which is uh, primarily necessary for uh, system admins. So now. using the shell prompt after you start a terminal emulation package or log into your linux virtual console you get access to the shell cli prompt the prompt is your gateway to the shell so this is the place when you enter the shell commands this is the place where you enter the shell commands now the default 
prompt symbol for the bash shell is the uh, dollar sign this symbol indicates that the shell is waiting for you to enter text different linux distributions use different uh, different uh, symbols use different uh, formats for the prompt uh, on this open to linux uh, system the shell prompt uh, looks uh, like the following way so the dollar symbol and uh, on the centos linux system it's it it completely looks uh, like the following way um, beside acting as your access point to the shell the prompt can provide an additional helpful information in the two preceding examples the current user id the first one the current user id name you can see the current user id name this is the current user id name surya is shown in the prompt also the name of the system the name of the system uh, is also shown as a ubuntu 01 so think of uh, uh, the shell cli prompt as a help uh, assisting you with your linux system giving you helpful insights and uh, letting you know the shell is ready for the new commands another helpful item in a shell is the bash manual so before going to the bash manual i would like to uh, demonstrate the shell prompt i would like to shell prompt in uh, ubuntu as well as centos what is the difference between the ubuntu and then centos for that you just uh, log into your aws if you have or you just follow it then go to the ec2 instances and see in which region you are it's fine i'm in north virginia that is us east one that's absolutely fine then i would i will go for launch an instance i'll name it as centos then i want a centos 7 so quick start okay i'll go for the marketplace and i'll search for centos 7 mm, i got it i got the centos 7 i'll select it i'll click ok now okay my ami is ready and then now i'll select okay t2 micro micro is also fine it's that's why it's it's uh, mm, just to demonstrate uh, uh, a prompt so t2 micro is more than enough then i'll create key pair send os 7 kp and then i'll uh, I have to create security group so CentOS is uh, 7 the name is fine and then this is by default everything is fine so I just want to access uh, this SSH through my IP only so rest all is absolutely fine so let me okay everything fine let me launch it mm, by the time this get launched i will okay system is pretty slow okay it's successfully launched but by the time get launches okay apologies for inconvenience and uh, let me go to downloads Mm, this is my and then I'll copy 
here okay this is CentOS and uh, let me by the time it gets started I will launch one more instance I'll name it as Ubuntu and then I'll take Ubuntu 20 or whichever is fine 20 I'll go for 20 Ubuntu 20 LTS and a rest all fine t2 micro is also okay let me create a, a new key pair that is uh, okay ubuntu kp that's fine fantastic let me create it then again i have to edit my security group so here i'll give name ubuntu sg and then uh, here also i'll change the name ubuntu sg and from my ip i want to access this from my ip rest all fine let me launch it so by the time i'll bring this into my folder so where i can open okay let me paste it okay got it so now i think i uh, both should be running yeah so let me open git bash here and put it on the right side and uh, i'll open one more git bash and uh, sorry i put it in left side and i'll open one more and i'll put it in put it on right side yeah so now we'll launch the centos first because it's running so go to the network sorry mm, sorry let's click on connect and then ssh client copy this i think this is uh, through git and then paste it and sim yeah it's asking for uh, permission give s uh, this got permanently added and your centos is ready and then we will get back to the another instance that's ubuntu and then click on connect again copy the link and uh, launch it uh, and access that uh, through this this is also asking for the permission and i gave it okay it's all done all set okay let me clear this and let me zoom in a little bit more yes fine let me clear this also yeah both are ready now on left you see centos on right you see ubuntu so first we'll look into um first we'll look into ubuntu sorry sorry first we'll look into centos and then we'll look into ubuntu uh, and uh, parallelly so here who am i who is the user the user is centos and here who is the user the user is ubuntu so the first part is ubuntu and then host what we have is host so this is the host name and here this is the host name basically these are the ips these are the public ips so the public IP, sorry private IP. the private ips are the host names here and then what we have the important thing to be looked at is here 
this part tilde tilde or tilde and then square bracket and then this dollar symbol dollar symbol is common for the both and tilde is also common for the both but whereas uh, uh, it, this one has a colon and then this one doesn't have a colon and uh, the difference is you just compare the Ubuntu and the CentOS. CentOS has a square brackets and then Ubuntu does not have anything other than colon and then the prompt uh, uh, dollar symbol is common for both so now let's check it's a CentOS, it's not the root user, so now it's a normal user. Now let's see what happens if 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 we become the root user. So sudo i so now it has become a root user. The dollar symbol has been changed into hash or pound symbol. Let's see here what happens. And uh, um again sudo and i so again here also the dollar symbol has been changed into hash symbol or pound symbol so that's what the main uh, important i would like you to uh, note down so the first difference is it starts with the square brackets and here there are no square brackets and whereas uh, a root user is common sorry user name user name then at the rate of is common then at the host name host name then we'll have a tilde symbol tilde symbol but here you will have an additional colon and dollar symbol for the normal user pound symbol for the root user so now what does a tilde symbol uh, basically conveys what does tilde symbol conveys is you are the you are in home directory of that user so now what is the home directory for root user let's see pwd yes that's the forward slash root this is the home directory for the root user let's check here what's the condition pwd yeah, obviously this is the root user of the home directory so that's what this tilde symbol shows and similarly if you become a CentOS so now you become a normal user now there is no more the tilde symbol let's check why because now you are still in a root user but here if you check CentOS and then tilde symbol is still exist does that means at that time at that time the directory is where the home the directory where you were you were there is the home directory of the centos let me let me let me let me take you there cento cd home centos see now it has got changed into tilde so pwd so to keep it simple it, the same logic applies in uh, uh, Ubuntu also. To keep it simple, what I am uh, trying to say is when you find a tilde symbol here or here, let me uh, change to so SU and then uh, Ubuntu. Sorry. Sometimes it happens. Okay. Uh, here again forward slash root complete it got added so let me go home and then ubuntu okay so when you find either tilde symbol in centos or in uh, in ubuntu or centos the logic remains same if tilde symbol is there you're in the home directory of that user whoever user whether it is a normal user or whether it is a root user it doesn't matter if there is no tilde symbol and there is 
the directory mentioned root use root or whichever directory that means you are in you are in that directory with a different user so that's what it says and these are the differences uh, uh, between uh, differences between ubuntu and a centos so now let's get back to the now let's get back to the slide again so now i hope uh, it's pretty much clear and uh, uh, you got it very rightly so uh, let's move on to the next uh, stage so what we have next is interacting with bash manual so you should become familiar with the manual because it's invaluable for working with commands especially when you're trying to figure out what various command uh, align parameters are for example if you take uh, the first one when i type man man so here i'm using uh, uh, just windows sub oh sorry these are linux i'll go for the ubuntu with the wsl so i think this fonts are more than enough uh, so let me drag it up and then uh, bring it uh, yes so when i type man and then man so i got a detailed manual so basically it talks about uh, how to interpret the commands and then options and then arguments and this this is a in detailed documentation where you can get to know how to use the commands and options and arguments how can you leverage these different types of options uh, which are attached to the commands so that's it it will have a huge uh, benefit so let's go through it uh, uh, one by one so first whatever you find that it's a man uh, you will whatever command that what we get is a command name and then you will have a synopsis basically um syntax of the command so normally how you will have is command and then command options and then arguments so basically there are two types of command uh, options you can have either long options and then short options and when you open for example any uh, when you typed when you requested for the uh, manual for any command so this is how it opens first uh, it name name of the command and then it will give you a syntax a synopsis or syntax of how you can use it and then it will give you a description a detailed description about that about that command then below that it will show you different options and then it will also give you different examples and then finally it will give you overview and uh, defaults and finally options long options short options and uh, it will close it with uh, some manual pages so this is how it works to just get out uh, from this page click q that's it so now what will we do is uh okay mm, just get, go through this first we'll have a name uh when you seek for an uh help from this man utility so the following information it will throw you it will throw out first one is name name displays command name and a short description about that command synopsis shows command syntax configuration provides configuration information and options uh, describes command options it could be a short option or long option and description a detailed description uh, about uh, that command 
and environment describes environment variables used with it and files defines files used by command and a few examples at the end so this is how uh, this is how uh, a, a overview of uh, seeking a help from man utility for ubuntu and uh, for for CentOS, it could be a different way, but for here, yeah, for CentOS, you just uh, take up the system in a completely different way. There, it just okay, okay, it's gone. Uh, let me check. Mm. So, here, what we have to do is Oh, even for here, we use man. That's fantastic. Even for the CentOS. Um, I think. Yeah, that's good. For CentOS. But whereas some other distributions will take some other way. But here, man, we are discussing up the man. Because this is common for both the ways. So, let's get into the uh, Ubuntu again. And then, for example let me check ls this is the famous one most famous one so the first one is name name section here the short name that is ls the command name and what uh, the description short description ls means list directory contents that's what the ls command and then a synopsis or a syntax command syntax first you write command name then you mention options then you mention argument that's it that's the simplest syntax then a detailed description what is ls what does it do ls is list information about the files the current directory by default by default sort uh, and sort entries alphabetically if none of like c option f t u v s u x nor long option such as uh, double iphone sort is specified now mandatory arguments to long options are mandatory for short options so now uh, we have some examples see a iphone a is a short option double iphone all is a long option and both does same function do not what what is their function do not ignore entries starting with dot that's what that's what it do and iphone capital a or i double iphone almost iphone or do not list implied dot and dub, double dot so if you give other and i iphone b that's a cap i that's a small option that's a short option uh, there are different plenty of other options out of which most widely used one is L L I'll just find out I I found I so here is L L L means L is a short option use a long long listing format long listing format so that's what and R is another one which we, we use it a recursive sorry reverse the smaller one we use not the capital R reverse a reverse order while sorting and then T is the another one based on sort by time newest first see the time so we have seen all those things let's get into the any of the system if it is available so this is basically uh, mm. I think uh, let me zoom in uh, let me zoom out okay I think it's uh let me click Q okay um, okay still it's there let me check ls is the base command so nothing is done so let me get into root ls is the base command so these are the information that's present in that so if you just give ls so this is how it shows then i will add one option that is l s i'll add l so let's get the long list that's the magic no it's not the magic these are all 
written as a lower level language these are all called even this is called a utility even ls is utility though these are commands these are utilities and these are written uh, with the lower level language and these are all put it as a binary files in binary directories okay so now uh, let's add t so this is how it works and then r so this is how it works and when we use all together that's it this is how it works so we have seen the clear distinction between the prompts of CentOS and then Ubuntu and also we have seen uh, how to seek the help from the uh, Ubuntu or CentOS using man utility.